Hello friends, welcome to Connected. Seven days have passed, I am back here with a new topic and a new guest. My name is Fabiana Spinoza and I'm going to be the guide of today's journey. I want to remind you that you do not only see us here through the Abby Ayala channel, but also you see us through uh, our channel in YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. I hope you have ended your week happy and you are ready to enjoy your weekend. I am going to be guiding your journey from Santa Cruz, South America in Bolivia. I want to tell you that this is our sixth show, number six, and I am really happy that you get the time to connect with me. today's topic I want to invite you to do an exercise we are going to imagine that we are a people that develop cities let's say that our job it is to uh, construct to build a city where we are going to provide um, families and people a very a very functional and happy life so let's say, in order to come up with what would I put on this city? Let's say, let's make a list of needs. If I wanna start, I will think with first, probably medical, health, medical care. Okay, so I will put there a hospital or a clinic. Number two, for sure we need education, right? People are going to start uh, having families, we're gonna have younger people, older people, we are always going to need educational centers. All right, we can put that too. Number three, what else can it be? We can think about maybe some center or place where we can practice our faith. Let's say a church or a religion, um, a religion maybe a place where we go and we uh, practice our spiritual side. Where else we're probably gonna need green areas, right? And by that, you can start kind of imagining how your city is going to look. So the question here is, have you thought about putting a cultural center in your, in your exercise, in your little town that you invented in your mind? Have you ever been to one? Have you ever gone to one? Have you ever participated on activity that was uh, held on a cultural center? That's our topic today. I want to tell you about the importance of, of having this type of centers in our communities. Let's say the same way we have the need to learn and to get healed and to have um, also uh, green areas to become person and to be better about ourselves, right? We also have the need to uh, have a place where you can um, learn about other cultures or in some other cases learn about your own culture. When we think about uh, a place where we do our leisure, an entertainment center, doesn't always have to be a place where you go and try to forget about your problems or forget about your about yourself, right? Because most of the time we think, oh, fun, we relate to uh, forgetting about everything and just having a good time. Maybe we can put together these two ideas and say, okay, an entertainment center where we can learn about other cultures and we can get in touch with our own culture. That's today's topic and I have a special guest that is gonna talk to us about it. His name is Enzo Moreno, he lives in Toronto, uh, Canada, and he is uh, the founder of a cultural center, actually the name is Latin America Culture Center. He uh, holds events there and he creates this space so people from all of the residents in Toronto uh, with a Latin American background, they can go there and exchange ideas, exchange music, people that are reading their poetry, people that are singing their music, movies, and just, just he just wants to provide the place where people can come together and exchange 
whatever they know or just leave their culture. So stay tuned, we'll be right back with Enzo Moreno and we'll learn more about uh, his Latin America culture space in Toronto, Canada. Don't go anywhere, stay tuned. Welcome back, thank you for remaining connected. And as promised, I am already connected with my guest that is finds himself all the way in Toronto, Canada. His name is Enzo Moreno and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about his background. Enzo was born in Montevideo, Uruguay. He's a journalist in radio and also for TV. He studied sociology in Buenos Aires, Argentina and he worked over 15 years as a correspondent for Radio Havana. I am very grateful to have him here today. Today, um, Enzo, he is the founder of the Latin American uh, Cultural Center that it works in Toronto. I have the pleasure to have him here. Welcome, Enzo, how are you doing? How are you, Fabiana? A pleasure to meet you, a pleasure to meet uh, and get to know all the work of uh, Abayala TV, something that uh, we are already trying to people get to know, the work that you do there in Bolivia for the world, and specifically all the, the work that uh, the government of Evo Morales is doing. Thank you so much. So, and so as we were talking about the importance of, of having this type of centers in our community, um, let's try to get a little bit to the bottom of this. How did you start the center? What is, what are the beginnings? What's the story? You have the center for one year and a half already. So tell us, how did you start it and how did you got here? Yes, well, basically, uh it was a, a, the need inside of the community, of the Latin American community, of having a space that will reflect uh, important aspects of our culture, of our background, of our heritage. Uh, Latin America is a very diverse uh, region, going from Mexico to Central America, of course, passing by the center, of uh, Peru, Bolivia, all the Andean culture, all uh, everything that has to do with Brazil. So we are a, a good mixture of people uh, with black, with native, uh, with the European background as well. So we need to let the world know aspects of what we know. Uh, so under that uh, principle is that me and, and a group of people, we gather together and we push forward in order to have a space that will reflect through cinema, through theater, through which we call peñas, uh, live music every Saturday, different aspects of uh, the Latin American uh, culture. So that was the, the beginning. And now we have groups of kids, a group of youth, poetry. Uh, anyways, there is a uh, lot of work to keep it up, but uh, we've been struggling for, for a year. We don't have any, any, any finance from the government yet. Uh, it's coming, but not yet. So uh, that's the beginning, uh, Fabiana. All right. And then. Um because I'm always thinking and right, what I really want to do with this show, it's kind of like inspire other people with experience of other people so maybe they can do the same thing, you know? So I wonder, let's say somebody would like to do what you say, they, they see the need of having a, a space like that in their community. How do you, how does the, the center, it's main, how is it maintained financially? How do you do to make the funds to keep the work to, to keep the work going on. Okay, basically the work, we did a, a little bit of networking with a small uh, business around the, around in the neighborhood. We are located in a neighborhood that is primarily uh, populated by Italian, Portuguese, uh, people from the Caribbean area, Jamaica mainly, and Latin Americans. So basically you have lots of business that, uh, you know, are um, 
selling products from Latin America and the Caribbean region. With that, we made like a sort of a club. So if you become a member of the center and you support the center, which whatever amount you can, uh, then you get a discount from this selected business just because ah, of that. I see. Plus you get I free see. entry I to all the events. So basically it's uh, done with uh, concerts, uh, courses for the community uh, that you pay a little bit, the membership and this sort of uh, agreement with uh, the business in the area. Oh, I see. So you have some kind of like a membership uh, like to start with. Is there any type of transaction like that if you let's see, let's say if I want to belong, do I only come uh, when there is a, a show, a performance or I can like kind of belong to a to the club or to a group or to the center? Yeah, well, the idea is we organize uh, different committees of so financing of uh, food, for instance, or uh, an organizing committee that is the one that coordinates everything happening at the center. So basically you have, you could be just a plain participant or you could become involved. Uh, um, yeah. Because even though we had uh, to have uh, some sort of organization, uh, the principle of the, of the center is that everybody has a voice and everybody has the right to participate. So it's right. uh, very equal, uh, the level of participation. So the, the, the fact that I'm uh, so-called the director doesn't mean much in practical terms. And um, as I read a little bit on your website, um, you guys uh, actually Whoever that comes with an idea or a talent or uh, whoever can teach something, they just approach the center. How do you find them or how do they find you? How do you do that connection in order to get them to the center? Well, there is, there is a, a radio station, which is called uh, Voces Latinas, uh, mm -hmm. that broadcast four hours in Spanish. So we also have some sort of a common work with them. Uh, so they, for example, they, they broadcast on the radio whatever events we have. There is a number of uh, Latin American uh, newspapers. The population here uh, in Toronto of Latin Americans uh, probably is like around the 60,000. So it's not a small number. Unfortunately, we haven't grown up uh, together like in order to have a, a representative, uh, for example, at, at political levels. We had few isolated cases, but we haven't come to the maturity of, you know, gathering together right. uh, to demand uh, the needs of this community. Canada has a policy implemented during the 70s, uh, which stands for multiculturalism. So Canada is a country of immigrants uh, and everyone, everyone tries to, here there is a multi-ethnical channel. So you can see TV from Serbia, TV from Bolivia, TV from Uruguay, TV from Peru or India, China. So that policy mm -hmm. fortunately has been kept alive by Canada. So there is a space for newspapers or to practice your religion if you have one and basically in that frame is that we we work so there is a, a very straightforward connection doors are open in right. the center uh, so people will come and approach and say oh, well i have this idea this initiative uh, is it possible to do it and then we try to facilitate the spaces so the center is not something that holds and leads, but opens the spaces for people to express themselves. From painters to singers to poets, to we have a lot uh, to give, fortunately, in Latin America. I was gonna say that. Do you go from uh, films, right? You guys watch movies. You have uh, also um, 
uh, people that read their own poetry, correct? You also have yes. uh, music bands that go and show their talents. It's a place where people can either go and share their talent or go share their knowledge, whichever the topic it is, correct? Exactly, exactly. That's that's it. All right. And from all of the experience, from all of this whole year and a half that you've been working on the center, how many events among workshops and everything do you think you, you, you put together in this one year and a half? In this one year and a half, uh, I would say uh, like over 80. 80. 80. That's a very yeah. nice, uh, very nice amount. And from all of those events, which one you would say that will be the more meaningful? Which one is the one that you had more people coming, or it was more um, the the audience, the feedback from the audience was the best? Can you share a story with yeah. us, please? Yeah, uh, basically, uh, I will say the peñas. Peñas, where uh, there is a night, they start uh, Saturday night around 7 or 8 o'clock and uh, they go until 2 or 3 o'clock sometimes. Uh, people will come and that combines people reading poetry, uh, people singing live. Uh, we had uh, two months ago, there is a, a beautiful Bolivian group here with uh, eight, me eight members. Uh, one uh, lady from Canada that also plays the Zamponia amazingly uh, and they presented themselves uh, for the first time. So it was oh, uh, wow. really oh, wow. feeling and amazing to, to have a, a little bit of Bolivia here to get to know. Right. Because yeah. one of the things is that uh, I said uh, it's kind of contradictory but being far, like in Canada, is that you become more Latin America because you have the opportunity to know about Chile, about Bolivia, about Argentina, about Mexico, about El Salvador, because everybody's here. And we have in common right. Right. A, a, a culture, some principles, and the only thing that can uh, define us as Latin America is the geographical uh, uh, region. That's why we call right. it uh, Latin America. And not uh, here in Canada, they try to call us Hispanics, which is a very insulting term since we've been invaded by the Spaniards. Can you give us the, the difference? Like right now that you're talking about this, can you kind of like educate us and say why, what's what, really? Okay, basically uh, the Hispanics, uh, they come from a term, a, a Latin term, that was called Hispania. So the Spaniards were the ones coming from the middle to the north part of Spain. The south was always dominated under the control of, of, of different parts, different countries, or, or different uh, ethnicities. The Moors were there for almost 800 years. That's where the flamenco and all the regions in the architecture comes from. All the knowledge in mathematics uh, and algebra. Uh, and uh, so basically, when the Romans invaded, they defined that as the Spaniards. When uh, Spain colonized Latin America, also everybody was Hispanics, less the natives and the blacks. So they call it Hispanics. So that was the first thing. So when the, the, the process of the independence came, the leadership, Bolivar, uh, San Martin, Artigas, they, they saw the need of making the difference uh, that we were not Spaniards or, or Hispano-Americans. So they created the term of Latin Americans to unite. So that's why the, the word of Latin American is, uh, is one word that is usually avoided by in the States and in Canada. Right. And it's something we try right. to rescue because it's part of the history. 
but that is the term that we should refer to ourselves, correct? We are um, Latin Americanos, correct? <laughs> okay, yeah, that's Latin a Americanos. great explanation. Well, thank you. And, and we hope for the day that, you know, that we become one nation, basically, which is uh, one Latin America united. That's the only way that we can, we can work out uh, towards the future. Uh, divided, we are weak, united, we have everything. Latin America has uh, the riches of the world, right? Every climate, uh, social diversity, uh, geographical diversity, we have minerals, we have oil, we have yes. everything we need in order to make uh, our continent to, to be great, not better than anyone, but ourselves. That is right, that sounds right, and it is correct. Well, we are going to go to a cut, and we'll be, we'll be right back with the last question for Enzo. Don't go anywhere, stay connected, we'll be right back. Welcome back, and I'm glad you are still connected with us. We are talking with Enzo Moreno, all the way from Toronto, Canada. I have the last question for Enzo, and this is kind of like an open mic question that I just want you to kind of like send your message through the answer of these questions. I want you to tell us what is, well, based on your experience, what is the social work achieved with the existence of this center? Um, we talk about unite, uni, uniting people and different cultures and stuff like that. But do you have a story, like one example that you could tell us um, about this, about the, what, about the objective of the center um, being coming to reality. Yeah, well, basically, as I said, uh, I think uh, we come from very different uh, cultures, and we have here the opportunity to learn from each other, to become close, to understand that. Uh, a Peruvian is not different than a Uruguayan or, or an Argentinian from a Mexican. Or we are the same. We are absolutely the same. And that's one of the things. I think the, the work of the, of, of the cultural center is to see ourselves. Many cases here, in many cases, in many families, the children, are, you know, uh, either a shame of the parents, because here many of the Latin Americans, we do the jobs that others don't want to do. We clear the gardens, we drive the trucks, we clean the garbage, we clean houses. So we are not a rich community, we are a working class community. So many of the kids, they are not taught the language. They don't want to speak the Spanish or whatever language is spoken in, in, in our continent, which is many, many, many languages. Uh, and that's the other reason why we don't want to call ourselves uh, Spanish, because we speak, fortunately, many languages. Bolivia is one of the cases with the riches of the native culture. In Mexico, you speak 80 languages. Uh, Colombia, 60 languages, and we can go Brazil, around 45. So the diversity of our continent is, is something amazing. And the idea is to approach from a different view the cultural aspect and become proud of ourselves, proud of the heritage, the heritage we have, and that, that the future generations, the kids that are growing, they embrace this culture. So when we broadcast cinema of Latin America, it's a cinema that uh, looks like us, with our colors, with our works, with our realities. So the idea of that is just to reflect ourselves so you can see yourself and be proud of who you are. So that's the, right. the idea of the center. That's the achievement that we've been trying to do uh, we revived something that used to be done during the 70s here, which was called the Peñas. So people will come and sing, will come and express themselves. And that, I think, is the, is the main value of this. In the future, Correct. we plan to organize a, a cultural center 
uh, more in terms of more classes in, in Spanish for kids uh, towards a social and political organization inside this community to struggle more for the rights and the needs that we have as a community. So it's just a small space, nothing pretentious, but the idea is that, you know, we all together, we can do it. Right, and I think that that's such a powerful message because most of us uh, have the experience of living in other countries or starting your families in other countries. And sometimes you find you don't have like the assistance or you don't have the help of a community to help you, let's say, speak your own language. Sometimes your kids don't see you speaking your own language themselves because you're always working and right in your life. But then when you create a space like this and you see people that are speaking the language and they're eating the food or listening to the music, that definitely gives you a sense of identity. And that is something that hopefully people are gonna lose throughout the time less and less, right? Let's say we want to rescue that. I wanna thank you so much for your message. And so I feel like it's a very important topic and your work is very, very valued and very important for this world and for these communities. Thank you for being here. And I'm gonna ask you to send a hello to all the Bolivia audience and all the audience we have on the social media. Go ahead. Uh, Bolivia is a, is a land that I visit uh, during the referendum. There is a, a small documentary that uh, I did regarding the, the decision of the Bolivian uh, government to, to give more power to the people, to give more participation, to, to make everyone visible. So Bolivia remains in, in my heart, deeply, deeply enclosed in there, always present. And uh, so our hearts to the, the Bolivian people, to the Latin American continent. And uh, it's important to know that here, even though we are far away, we keep on going and trying to stand for our continent from these spaces in a different way, but always right. there. Thank you, Ansel, again, and stay connected. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. In order to finish the show, I want to leave you with a thought, and I want you to reflect that whether we are in a different country or, or we are in our own, own country, um, we always grow up with the sense of of belonging somewhere, somewhere. We all know where we come from. We know our family. We know where our roots. So. Uh, accord with the time that passes and all of different experiences that we all have, you are always going to find somebody that does, don't live with you anymore or live away from you. So in order to be able to create a platform where people can come and connect a little more with them themselves, right? Uh, you, we always find ourselves more um, more secure and more comfortably when we are surrounded by people that understand us, the people that speak our own language. And sometimes we uh, find some new values that maybe we didn't know before. So if you are the type of person that has the opportunity or has the know-how on how to create this type of platform. Or if you are not that person, you are, you know somebody that can, I will definitely encourage you to do it so. Why would I say this? It is important, as we, we said before, for, the, for the, new, um, the, new, the new generations that are coming. It's important to create a space where you can tell them where we come from, where you can, whether they like it or not, Right? It's not about imposing, but it's at least about giving them the opportunity to get in touch with that. So whether you are the artist or the poet, the poet person that comes with something to offer to a center like this, or you are the audience, both are as equal as important. Always go, if you find in your community a place that is like giving a little show, Go, just your presence makes a big difference. You make a difference. I wanna leave you with that thought. I will see you again in seven days. And also I wanna remind you that if you know somebody that should be here on the, 
on the show, please shoot me an email. My email address is conectadosbolivia24 gmail.com. Just shoot me an email, I'll do the connection, and if you know a person or you are the person that I should be meeting, please just write me. I will see you in seven days. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Until next time.